Coach Silverfield, whenever you're ready. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us. Uh, just got off the practice field, literally, but uh, excited. Hope everybody had a, a great Christmas and and they're having wonderful holidays. But as we look forward, obviously, excitement for tomorrow. Uh, good quick practice today, and, and the guys have been doing well and excited to get playing this game in about 24 hours. Matt and then Avery. Hey, Ryan. I uh, hope you had a good Christmas. Um, obviously, it's the last ride for this group together. You're never going to have this group together as one again after tomorrow. Some guys go on to next level. Some guys will be back next year. Do you talk to them about, even though it's obviously a very important game, just kind of savoring the moment, soaking it in, and enjoying it with each other as much as possible one last time? You know, we talked about it last night. We had a, a Christmas dinner at the hotel, and I just talked to him about, you know, the reason that football brought us together as a family uh, last night and just to enjoy that fellowship, right, because we're fortunate that we have this family and that, that football was able to, even though we're not blood, uh, some of us are closer, and we've had those relationships built over six months or six years and uh, a unique time to be together last night. And I always say the same thing. Like, I hope they enjoy what I call these Friday night meetings where, the, you know, we're together and bonding over meals. Um, but understand full well why we're here, uh, but the, to enjoy that time together. And we, we all know, right? We all know that the, the time's ticking for a lot of these guys. It will be a completely new roster uh, next year, but make the most out of these opportunities and enjoy it. Avery and then uh, Evan. Happy holidays to you, Coach. Uh, like you mentioned before, just uh, 24 hours before you get going. And I'm just wondering, you know, do you – kind of talk to the guys about just, you know, is this a reward and kind of a having fun type of moment on going into the last game? Or, you know, do you still kind of approach it with, a, you know, business as usual mentality? Yeah, it's fine, that fine balance. You know, I think leading up to this, uh, the city of Dallas, the bowl game have been fantastic hosts. And I want them to enjoy all the festivities that lead up to a bowl game. Um, but now 24 hours away, our, our, we got to put our focus in on the game itself. That's why we're here. Uh, let's make no bones about it. So, uh, we're very fortunate that we were able to enjoy a lot of the things that come around with playing in such a wonderful bowl game. Now the focus has to be 100% on the game itself. So try our best, even though it's a, a unique situation to treat this just like we would in a away game, uh, coming off of practice and then meetings later and then rolling into tomorrow's kickoff. Evan and then Frank. Hey, Ryan, um, just a couple things. One, you mentioned everyone's kind of, you know, everyone's focused on the game. How are you guys you know, when you look at Utah State one last time, I mean, is it the same kind of preparation you've seen before as far as just kind of what to expect from them? And two, health-wise, how are y'all looking at this point? Yeah, I think the preparation has stayed the same for the most part, Evan. Obviously, we've had a few extra practices, obviously, in Memphis prior to getting here. It's always one of those things we don't want to do paralysis by analysis. And I, you guys have heard me say that before, right? Making sure we're not okay, they could do this, they could do that. And then all of a sudden our guys aren't out there to go out there and play fast. We know they're going to have some wrinkles in their game plan for us as well. Um, they've got an excellent coaching staff, but we're doing our best to uh, keep preparation as normal as possible if there's such a thing. And then uh, injury-wise, we're looking good, excited. Uh, all, all the people that we're expecting to play should be able to play. That includes Gates? I know we didn't play last uh, SMU, I think. Is he, he good to go? Yes, sir. Thank you. Frank and then Chris. Ryan, when you talk about trying to put your your final stamp on this season and end uh, above 500, is is that something you're even, you're even thinking about right now, or is it just bowl, bowl game prep? Yeah, 100 percent of the game itself. I, I don't uh, I don't think about. We've talked about the right records in the past and the expectations. Obviously, it, that is important to have a winning season here, and I understand that, um, but. The, the record at the end of it doesn't matter, right? Just going out there and find a way to win the game and the record will take care of itself. And so I haven't thought about it one second other than let's just go out there and, and play our best and make sure I'm putting our guys in the best position. And that's all I can do. I know you've uh, been asked this before, but, you know, a guy like Eddie Lewis who mentioned, you know, he didn't get to play in a ball game last, uh, last year and everything and just having this opportunity after what you guys went through last year, um, does that add a, a, another level of, of excitement for, for this coaching staff and for this, this team, knowing that you missed this opportunity last year? I think so, right? I mean, I'm hoping that an hour from now I don't get a call of someone telling me that uh, there's a cancellation to go to this bowl game. I mean, gosh darn, but we've been there before, and that will be Chapter 17 of the book uh, when I put this career to rest. But, 
Yeah, I think there's excitement, right? We feel like pretty comfortable this bowl game is going to be played. And I think the guys are excited. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm ready to go hurry up and get to tonight's meeting. So that means we're getting closer to kickoff. Thanks. Chris and then Wes. Thanks, Coach. I'm Chris Mykoski. I'll be the sideline reporter for the national radio broadcast tomorrow. Uh, with Coach Hennigan, obviously being such a legend in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and now Seth, he's played plenty of times back here in Dallas since he's been a Tiger, but I want to hear a little bit about just his character and just uh, obviously being the son of a coach, how that helps build him up to the young man he's become. Yeah, Seth is a fantastic young man. I mean, when you speak about his character, it's the highest regard. He does it the right way, everything you want, uh, especially as a quarterback. He and you can tell he's a son of a coach because the way he prepares, the way he handles himself, his knowledge, his understanding, um, his leadership qualities, he does it right all the time on and off the field. And that's what you appreciate about him. I can't say enough great things about Seth. Obviously, I hold his dad in high regards as well. And obviously, he's done a fantastic job in this area. But uh, Seth has just been a, a pleasure and a joy to work with and uh, so knowledgeable and, and so understanding. He loves to take coaching. Um, and, you know, he's going to continue to improve as this game goes on. But, yeah, it's good for him to be back in his hometown. Obviously, the last time we were here was not the leaving with the best taste in our mouth. So we're excited to come back and, and take another swing at this thing. Wes and then Matt. Hey, Coach. Wes Pruitt, Four Star Sports Media. When you look at the events that took place earlier this year before the Navy game, I think it's very fitting that Memphis is represented in the first responders bowl. Talk a little bit about, about what it means for this football program to be in this bowl game. Yeah, Wes, I think that's of a, a, a huge note, right? Um, obviously, our first responders mean so much to us, not only in Memphis, but obviously throughout this world. And, you know, at one point my wife was a nurse and now a doctor. So um, it kind of hits home with me a little bit in that nature. But we've understood how wonderful those people have been. Uh, for our society and obviously like you mentioned the events that occurred in Memphis so it's great obviously the, you know, with all that comes along uh, the obligation to honor and appreciate those people and we certainly do as a program and we will continue to do so and then you know the bowl game itself uh, Surf Pro and, and the Dallas and the rest of the sponsors have been absolutely fantastic uh, the Western Hotel everybody that's been involved we just we're so appreciative of everybody's hospitality. Thanks Coach. And Brian? Uh, Ryan, uh, I know you guys have a healthy respect for them. They are towards the bottom of the Mountain West in defense. If you guys execute the way you expect them to, do you think that this could be a day that your offense feasts? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I think when you look at bowl games, like so much of it comes down to um, really, you know, who can execute at a higher level. And I know that's a, a coach speak question, but I shared with our guys the other night, right? Middle Tennessee played in the Hawaii Bowl, the game that we were uh, – attended last year that didn't get to participate in and middle Tennessee had minus 67 yards rushing. Let me say that again. Middle Tennessee had minus 67 yards rushing. Okay. So you would not say a fantastic day for their offense. San Diego state turned the ball over five times and middle Tennessee won the football game. So that's the nature of bowl games and it's going to come down to owning the football, maybe getting a couple of takeaways ourselves and being cleaner execution. So uh, when it's all said and done, uh, I think it's got to be, you know, both teams are preparing at a high level, got great respect for them. Uh, but I think we're going to have to be detailed in all three phases for four quarters and see what happens. Brian. Uh, Coach, uh, you know, this, the bowl season gets extra practices uh, for your team, especially the, the young kids. What have you seen uh, with these extra practices uh, from the ones that we haven't seen so far this year that gives you excitement, not only for the game, but going into next year? Yeah, I think like we talk about all the time, Brian, I think with the youth of our roster, anytime you get extra practices, a chance to continue to delve in on our culture of our program is huge. You know, you look at a guy like Dustin Thomas, a uh, name you guys probably don't know, but a true freshman wide receiver. He's done some fantastic things, but every time he gets the opportunity to, to write, sit in on another meeting, to get out there and practice, even if it's on a scout team, right, to, to be a part of this culture and the way we do things, that's going to build up immensely as he continues to move forward, right? Guys like DJ Bell, Trevor Hardy, um, guys we're going to continue to have high expectations for. Eric Gaston, right, scout team defense alignment, had a fantastic practice today, really getting after it. So just pleased with the effort of all those guys. But I think anytime we can continue to get out there on the field and be around our guys, it will make immense progress for the future of this program. Chris. 
Coach, with Ducker obviously coming in with such a tremendous track record, but his workload has increased here over the last month or so of the season. What have you seen as far as just him embracing that, uh, those chances, and uh, what you hope for him to accomplish tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, Jay's been fantastic. Glad to add him to the mix. We've kind of we talked about it going into the season. We'd love to have narrowed it down to um, two or three running backs rather than the running back by committee, which uh, unfortunately been a little bit of the last two years. I'm just hoping to find a couple bell cows. Um, obviously, we've had some injuries in the backfield, um, but Ducker's one of those guys we have heavy expectations for. He, you know, he knows how to run it the right way with the hard yards. He's good in protection, so uh, he's been great. He had, he appreciates the increased role. He certainly was able to handle that last year at Northern Illinois, and uh, you know, looking forward to him having a great day tomorrow. Back to Matt. Uh, now that you've been there for a couple of days and got some practices in, given that you finished the regular season there, has it felt more comfortable than normal bull prep? You know, I think that is important. You want to get to a place um, and be able to get immersed in what everything looks like, right? Here's the locker room. Here's the practice setup. Here's this. Here's that. Um, yeah, you do, but it's it's never feels like home, right? It's completely different the way it is. Um, yeah, the comfort, I guess, of sleeping in the same hotel room for a couple nights in a row has probably been the, the best thing for our guys, just getting a feel for that. But, um, yeah, it's become part of it, and we're, we're excited, uh, you know, to be able to do it at a high level. And, and, you know, appreciate SMU being gracious hosts as well for allowing us to use our facilities. Lance. Uh, hi, Coach. Uh, sorry if you've already answered this question already, but I uh, was wondering uh, your thoughts on coming back to a bowl game after having uh, last year's uh, canceled, what does that mean for the program, the players, and yourself? Yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm still going to hold my breath until this ball's kicked off because it was uh, 23 and a half hours prior to last bowl game that this thing was canceled. So we're, we're still T minus a few hours to even beat last year's track record of that. But um, it, it means a lot. Look, we're very fortunate. We, we always say in our program, the bowl games are the minimum expectations, but the ability to be around our guys and the camaraderie and the ability to play in such a wonderful bowl game is huge for us. And it means great importance to us. But obviously, ultimately, we came here to win a football game and that's where our focus has turned to.